Okay, so I recorded a video while I flew this one-on-one -on -one sortie versus a Russian uh, SU-27. Um, I'll just explain what's going on as I fly this and then we'll have a look at it in an analysis tool afterwards and I'll explain again what I did and why I did it of interest to air combat nerds and pretty much no one else. So uh, I headed, it, started out heading straight towards this bandit. I created the mission myself so I know roughly where he is. He's about 50 nautical miles to my 12 o'clock. Um, so I put my afterburners on, headed straight towards him, waited till he hit 450 knots and then jerked up to 20 degrees to climb to get out of the low thick air. Gives you missiles better range if you're higher up because they have to force their way through less air to get there. Um, I've also turned my jammer on to mask my altitude changes to the bandit. Um, you'll notice I was looking left and right out of the cockpit. That's just to maintain a bit of situational awareness so I know where I am relative to terrain. Um, so now I've leveled out at about Angels 22 and you hear that rapid beeping sound. That means that the bandit has locked me up with his tracking radar and that whoop 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 sound was the uh, missile launch warning. So he's now actively supporting a missile against me. Uh, his, his missiles depend on the reflected radar energy from his radar. Um, he launched at quite a long range, so I'm not really in much of a threat, not much of in much danger unless I kept heading directly towards him. Now I launched uh, AIM 120C at him. Um, I don't expect that to hit him. It's just to put him into a defensive posture. Um, so now I've turned about 50 degrees to the right. Um, and maintaining the bandit inside my radar's gimbal limit so I can continue to support my missile against him but uh, make his missile travel further to hit me. I'll explain later in the analysis tool, it's a lot clearer there. Um, so now the bandit has um, turned cold, so he's turning away from me now. Um, the moment he did so, it was safe for me to turn in because his missiles do not have any uh, radars of their own, they can only be they depend entirely on the ship that launched them to find their target, um, whereas my missiles um, have their own radar, so they're, they're what's known as an active missile, so they can find their own targets. Um, so right now I'm going gangbusters for him. Um, I lose the radar lock because he uh, went very low and I, my radar lost him in a ground clutter. Um, so now I also went low try to get below him so I can see him silhouetted against the sky or so my radar can see him silhouetted against the sky and pick him up. That didn't work so I went a bit lower still. Um, so one of the limitations with the radar is that it's pretty easy to lose people when they're down in the dirt. One of the dangers of the Russian planes is that they're equipped with electro-optical tracking which means they can pick up on the infrared signatures of enemy aircraft. Uh, so they're not as dependent on radar and they can get around some of its failings but obviously the infrared has got much shorter range. Um, so now he's popped up to 17,000 feet and is turning around to shoot me. Um, so I turn around and shoot at him and we both launch at roughly the same time. If you look closely you can see the plume from his missile launching. Um, so now I execute a defensive maneuver. I yank hard to the right and put him at my left o'clock. Uh, my, my 9 o'clock left, so um, and I also pump some chaff and flares out to try to distract his missile. Now he has to uh, support his missile against me and uh, he's now dead so there's no danger to me of his missile unless I'm really super unlucky. Um, I'll explain why turning well, why I put him at my 9 o'clock um, in the analysis tool afterwards. but. Um, my missile that I fired at the same time as his found its mark and shot him down. Glorious blood. Unfortunately he crashed inside a town so I'm sure there's going to be some collateral damage there. It's probably ruined someone's garden. Gratuitous flyby.
And then I get a bit silly and do some rolls. And then realize that this ground and ground is bad. So this is a tool called uh, Tack View. It allows you to replay a record of each sortie, either single player or multiplayer, and uh, see what went right and what went wrong. Uh, here's my opponent in uh, SU-27, and uh, I'm over here in my F-15C. And I'll just hit play, and so you can see I entered into that 20 degree climb. And uh, you can see some, some numbers up here as to airspeed and ground speed and altitude and so on and so forth. Um, now the current AI in DCS will launch a missile at the, the maximum range it can, while there's still a you know, non-zero chance of the missile hitting. Uh, it's not particularly realistic, um, but, you know, it's just AI. Uh, so it's important to note the major difference between Russian and um, American missiles as simulated in this simulator is that the Russian missiles launched from the SU-27 are passive only, which means they have no emissive capabilities. They don't produce their own radar energy to reflect off targets to home in on. Uh, they are dependent on the radar energy emitted from the ship that launched them uh, to find their targets. And so you see he launched his I-27ER here, um, and a couple seconds later I launched my AIM-120. M120 has a bug where it launches up into the air and then coasts back down, wasting a heap of um, energy. Uh, so you can see here, I execute that 50 degree turn to the right, and you can see the geometry of the the uh, situation. Uh, his missile has to hook right to its left and follow the hypotenuse of this triangle all the way out to meet me, whereas if he flew directly straight towards me, um, he would have to fly straight into my missile. So my missile, even though it wouldn't have, it didn't hit him, uh, still caused him to turn around and go defensive and hit the dirt, thus putting me in a superior position to move in on him. Um, his missile passed, well, it's probably about five nautical miles away, um, but it's absolutely no threat to me because he's facing that way, facing uh, north, and uh, he cannot support that missile against me. Um, my missile ran out of energy pretty quickly, but it's it served its purpose of uh, making him go defensive. As you can see, he's down in the dirt, um, bouncing up and down, um, trying to lose me, and um, probably wondering where that missile is. Well, actually, probably not. He knows where it is. So I'm trying to reacquire him at this stage. Um, yep, my and 120 just bit the dust. So I don't have any idea, well, I have a general idea of where he is. I know that he would have turned around and headed away from me, but um, it's not until uh, I'd say about now that I actually managed to find him on my radar, mostly because he popped up and got out of the dirt. Yep, there you go, you can see that there's dotted lines indicating that I'm now uh, painting him as a target. And so he is currently turning around, pulling an awesome high G upside down manoeuvre, and uh, he launches his um, radar guided missile there, and I launch mine at more or less the same time. Now, arguably he made a mistake then, if he'd launched uh, R27ET, uh, there would have been a much greater chance of me being killed, um, but wouldn't have helped him but we both might have died. So my missile goes out. Um, so for the first stage of the AM-120's flight, it's supported by my ship. So I tell it where to fly based on the information from my radar. But once the AM-120 gets inside its detection range, then its internal radar takes over and no longer depends on me to find its target. And so it goes whack, finds its target. Now I'm, uh, let me just rewind a little bit, um, now I'm, I'm pooping my pants at this stage because um, I can't be certain that his, that my missile would kill him before his missile kills me. He was higher, his missile had more potential kinetic energy so it could hit me. Um, so I executed a, a defensive manoeuvre known as a notch, which um, exploits a particular subtlety of 
to contemporary radar systems whereby if a target is below you and flying perpendicular to you you are invisible as far as it's concerned uh, due to it filtering you out considering you ground clutter or just uh, ground terrain and so because I per presented my my flank to his radar at my nine o'clock um, I effectively disappeared off his scope and I don't know if it'll be obvious on these sorts of ranges but um, his missile stopped tracking and uh, I was actually pumping some chaff out the back of my aircraft and it seems to have lost track of me and bit onto some of my chaff and it passed directly through my flight path through a piece of my chaff so I presented the, my nine o'clock to him and um, reduced my radar signature but my chaff stood out like a sore thumb and the missile went through it but doesn't really matter he's dead I'm alive that's what it should be and so there's me flying along and doing some rolls All right. I hope that wasn't too boring for anyone not overly familiar with um, contemporary air combat. Bye-bye.